thanks for joining us, Sean. It's strange times, isn't it? Yeah, it's different, isn't it? I think we're all having to learn to adapt, but, um, you know, it's been, what, a month now, so I think we're, we're getting there finally. Hmm. And you're obviously a key worker uh, working in the NHS. How, how, how has your role adapted during the lockdown and how's it going for you? Yeah, so I work as a, um, a specialist physio in outpatients. Um, so at the moment, we're, we're not seeing any patients sort of face-to-face -face unless it's a urgent or an emergency appointment. Um, so we're having to adapt to, to seeing or speaking to people over the telephone instead. So um, it feels a bit like a call centre, actually, but um, we're adapting well, still seeing and being able to help patients as best we can. Um, I think you know it's going to be this for the for a little bit, a few more weeks yet. I think um, of adapting. Yeah, so it must be quite challenging being a physio. Quite a lot of your it's quite a physical job. Like how much how much has it affected your job? Yeah, so um, obviously we'd normally be you know face to face with a, a patient, um, assessing you know what they're doing, how they're doing it. Um, and, you know, we are adapting to over the telephone, kind of getting patients to kind of report back instead or sometimes doing video consultations where we can. Um, but yeah, a lot of it, it's, a, it's a very much a, a, an interaction with a patient that you want and you lose that a little bit over the phone. Um, so it's, it's, it's different to create that relationship that you want to enable somebody to get better. Um, but we're doing our best and um, I think that's all we can do at the moment. I know some of my colleagues who have been uh, moved, you know, into different sort of specialities within physio and having to adapt much more so than I do um, or I have. Um, you know, they're going on to the critical care wards, the, the respiratory wards and having to really, you know, change what they do and help out really on that front line. Yeah. What's the atmosphere like and how's it changed during your workplace? How's the mood sort of changed during these times? You know, I think it's just everybody's just getting on with it at the moment because um, it's all unknown. You know, it's unprecedented. None of the staff, no matter how long they've worked for, for the NHS, will have had to do this sort of service before. Um, so people are just adapting. Um, but I think certainly where I am, you know, trying to really not talk about COVID-19 that much because it's, you know, it's a topic on every TV channel at the moment. You hear it on the radio all the time and actually you need to have a break from that at, at work. Um, but I'm sure, you know, in the hospital, really on the wards, um, from what I've heard, it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty horrible environment um, and one that, you know, I really don't envy people, people working on at the moment. Yeah. And um, obviously the whole country comes together at eight o'clock on Thursdays to um, applaud people like yourself on the NHS. Um, how much of a morale boost is that for you and your team at work? Yeah, so many people have said it, you know, we've got loads of WhatsApp groups and, you know, on social media. Uh, when you see the videos, you see people doing songs on the street. I think I, went, I was running out one night and, you know, ran past and, and people were clapping. And, it's, it, you know, it's, it is, it's... Um, it's such a simple thing to do, but actually, it, I think it has, um, you know, been welcomed by a lot of key workers, care, you know, care workers as well as NHS workers, um, and they're really appreciating it. Um, you know, I thought it was just going to be one week at the start, and it's carried on, hasn't it? I don't know how long it'll carry on for, but yeah, I think it's um, it's hit people emotionally as well as just, uh, you know, just a, a clap of the hands. Yeah, and how much are you missing hockey? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, probably hockey in comparison to other sports has been relatively lucky because we were we were pretty much at the end of our club seasons, uh, probably due a break anyway. Um, um, you know, Kevin Johnson, our head coach, Wales head coach, uh, was looking to give us um, most of April as a bit of a mental and physical break anyway, because our season mainly finished end of March, a couple of games, probably still to play for some teams and, and playoffs in some of the European um, representatives we're going to be playing. But actually, it's probably come at a good time in comparison to, you know, summer sports like cricket who are, have missed the start of their season. So, of course, if this goes on, um, on and on over the next few months, um, we start to impact us more in pre-season 
for club or you know the season as well I think it'll have more of an effect um but certainly we're missing you know we'd not really have had a couple of camps um with the with the Wales senior team at this point um and we, you know we, we're working to do that virtually instead which is different but it's also fun as well to do something a little bit different with our training yeah, yeah. Do you reckon you'll um, appreciate it more just having this unexpected break and we don't know how long it's going to be go on for? Do you reckon you'll appreciate playing a bit more? I think so. It just it just changes your perspective on everything, doesn't it? Um, you know, sports a massive thing. Um, like I said, it's been it's been quite nice to have a bit of a mental um, break from from league games every week and so forth. Um, but actually, you, I think you miss the 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 team environment, the kind of friendships that you usually have, um, you know, when you're cheering with your teammates, if you've scored a goal, you, you train, you're celebrating at training, those are the sorts of things you miss. And, you know, whilst we can't have any, you know, socially distancing, um, you know, obviously sport, sport, sport will be quite hard to, to get back into, won't it? But I think we'll definitely appreciate it more, that, that team um, kind of centre around sport a lot more when we get back to it. Yeah. And with your um, Wales hockey team, Kevin Johnson, he's um, created a virtual league for you guys, hasn't he? He has. I think he's enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going for you? I think, look, I think um, my team's actually top of the table. So uh, somehow I scored a couple of games virtually. I don't know how that's uh, scored a couple of goals, um, which is not, not like me normally uh, from where I play. So it's nice to see some goals going in, even if it's virtually. Some lots of cards being handed out as well, which is um, it's good fun. Some surprises in there. So yeah, it's, it's a good um, a little thing that that you know Kev's great at that sort of thing about keeping the team together. Um, I think there's another fixture maybe this Wednesday, so I'm sure he's got another few games to go to see who's uh, top of the league. Yeah, he's got quite a confusing system to how it's some sort of algorithm system that works. Do you understand that? Because it sounds to me like he's just sort of making it up. Well, I think we all thought he was going a bit crazy, actually, uh, at the start and just making it all up. But apparently he puts the situation into some algorithm and then it tells you whether it's a goal or a not goal or a card or a not card um, or a shot. So there seems some sense behind it, maybe. Um, but uh, I don't think many of the girls know that yet. So <laughs> I think he just, they just think he might be a bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, yourself being the captain... And being one of the more experienced players in the team, are you looking out to the sort of younger players, giving them a bit of advice about how to deal with these times? You know, yeah, we've had, we've kept a really close um, sort of communication with the group over the last month. Um, although, like I said, we, we were trying to take it as a little bit of a mental break. So it's certainly not been um, a forced thing or a... Uh, you know, not every day, not loads of commitment, but I think we've been interacting virtually with our strength and conditioning coach, doing some some fun sessions once a week. Uh, you know, been using technology like you know Strava, um, have a bit of competition between each other uh, with running, um, and then you know as a leadership group, we're you know checking in on all the teammates and just checking how things are. And we've got an, you know an onward monitoring system that we use. Again, Kevin's been doing some um, some tactical stuff with individual players as well. And I know we'll look to do more of that over certainly um, May time, June time, when when perhaps we won't be able to train just yet. Yeah, and how are you finding, how are you balancing all this uh, training as well, trying to stay fit alongside your job? Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's been so nice because the weather's been really nice. So you just kind of want to get out, don't you? And we've got that one exercise per day. Um, you kind of want to make the most of it. So I've seen loads of the girls, you know, cycling, um, going miles and miles on, on the bike and doing some running. Uh, it's just a bit of a change from perhaps what we'd normally do, loads of pitch running sessions. We can go out and enjoy the countryside in the nice weather a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we just have to adapt, don't we? We're getting used to all these technology uh, things like the Zoom. Um, I'm sure that's been pretty popular in the recent weeks. Yeah, and obviously everyone's got a lot more free time now. There's no sport on. You can't play hockey at the moment, unfortunately. Um, how are you keeping yourself entertained? Any series on Netflix or anything you've been watching? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think not Netflix comes up with the, the favourites, doesn't it, each day or each week. So I'm just uh, trying a few different series on there, but trying to get outside as well. I, I live in a flat, so um, you kind of feel a little bit cooped up, but um, just trying to get outside. And obviously I've got, I've got work, which does provide a bit of a routine each day. Um, so that's actually quite nice to, to break up. And I'm also studying a master's at the moment at Manchester Met Uni. Um, so I've got plenty of assignments and work to be doing with that. I'm just probably procrastinating a little bit at the moment. <laughs> wow, you must be very busy having the job and uni work. How are you balancing those two? Yeah, so uh, work's really supportive um, with my master's. Uh, and it's kind of part of my part of my role at work um, in order to progress to kind of a, the next level. So um, universities had to adapt a little bit with online lectures, online seminars, webinars, that sort of thing. So actually they're, they're making, you don't have to necessarily log on when they're being done. You can watch recordings um, so you can you can work around it. So when I'm bored for an hour or so. And there's no Netflix to watch anymore, then you okay. can put, put a uni lecture on. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. You missing like your classmates from uni? Yeah, yeah. So um, we still you, you can use a system where they, you can see everybody interactively every few weeks or so. Um, so we just had a bit of an Easter break anyway, actually a couple of weeks, uh, which we would do anyway. So I think this Wednesday um, we start back with some online content again so we've got a whatsapp group you know everybody's a message on that constantly <laughs> seeing how yeah. everyone's getting on submitting assignments and deadlines this week hmm. yeah how important is that keeping in touch with people on whatsapp and keeping in touch with your friends at this time oh massively massively i think you know i really feel for perhaps as people that live alone um and you know as much as um you know we can't get out and you know actually having somebody at home with with us is massive isn't it and i think that there'll be a lot of sort of i know there's a lot of mental health awareness things going on at the moment i think it's so important for, for people's mental health um to stay in contact whether it's you know facetime whatsapp video calls it's so so important i know they're doing a lot of that in the, the hospitals now as well uh you know with patients on the wards that perhaps can't have family in to visit them um, and things. I think technology's been so important um, at this time. Yeah, absolutely. What advice would you give to someone during these uncertain times? Uh, for me, I think the main thing has been trying to stick to a routine. Um, you know, use that time to get out and exercise and, and make the most of communicating with, your, you know, family, friends. I've seen loads of people doing like little quizzes um you know use and use this time to to catch up on things that you you might normally have never made time for before i'm sure everybody's cleaning their house three times over by this point um but yeah use it as use it but keep a routine um and try and stay healthy and communicating with friends and family i think are the key things thanks for your time sean really appreciate that good luck with the rest of your work and hope to see you back playing soon cheers thank you